This podcast contains explicit content. You are listening to Hardly Focused. My God, are you still talking? Hear more at hardlyfocused.com. Hey, we're Hardly Focused. It was on this day in 2006. Opie and Anthony came back to the radio on uh, WBCN in Boston uh, on on Howard Stern's former radio station. Uh, Yeah, April 26th, 2006. I remember waking up early just to hear their first day back. Uh, Was it it on Friday, a fake o Friday? Uh, I did, you know what they did? They did the ozone midget sightings quite a bit. <laughs> uh, but they, uh, came in to replace, uh, the, uh, disaster that was the David Lee Roth morning radio program. Broadcasting from New York, Philadelphia, Dallas, Boston, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, West Palm Beach, and Yakima. All right. Not Yakima, but Sam. Uh, and then they were there for three years, and then their flagship in New York uh, flipped formats. And then they were uh, ima- imagine this was, now. When I was younger, I used to think like I, w- I wanted to be in radio because of Opie and Anthony. And I think like in hindsight, they probably weren't the best people to learn how to do <laughs> radio from. But we emulated them early on, didn't we? A little bit, a little bit. We started uh, this. This show started uh, like a month after they uh, left FM radio for the last time. But like they still, they were still employed. They still had Sirius XM, and they were making millions of dollars. And they were just bitter and angry. Uh, there was a like they got into a huge fight on air. Like a couple days after the FM part of the show came to a conclusion. Uh, and it was just over, uh, just uh, unhappiness, just general unhappiness. I, you know, they they hated each other too. They have not spoken to each other in years. They quite regularly disparage one another on their respective platforms. You know, sometimes it's like a band. You know, you're you're in it together, and you're like, you know what? I'm done. Fuck this. You know? Yeah, it's just not worth. It. I mean, you, you hear about I hear about that like bands like Dinosaur Junior, for example, where uh, Jay Maskus and uh, Lou Barlow. The, the basis they don't speak to each other the the drummer murph is the mediator between the two of them well and it's because one of them split off and did dinosaur the third so <laughs> yeah you got, hey lou Barrow and sebado that's that's some good music right there that's some good eating but um that's i mean good soup I'm glad you know glad that that lineup remains together and releases music frequently but it it, it is sort of telling when the drummer is the one who has to go and and coordinate everything between everyone so um, isn't it usually the bassist that has to cool everything off because no one gives a shit about the bassist <laughs> usually yeah token you're black you can play bass no not <laughs> fuck <laughs> um and hey, i'm still super appreciative man opie follows the show on on twitter hey there we go um so mad respect to him you know Again, I uh, probably probably not the if you want to learn how to do radio and do it right, probably don't use them as an example. But as I've learned, uh, but um, it was still uh, for me that that was the day. This was the day in 2006. I really I'm like, hey, it's why I want what I want to do is why I'm interested in is is radio. And here we are doing a podcast. So <laughs> we've done uh, we've done pretty well for ourselves. Full circle. Uh, making that mad money. Yes, that mad, mad, mad Mickelson money. Um, speaking of uh, speaking of money, forty four billion dollars is what Elon Musk paid for Twitter. A hooker? No. Okay. Twitter, Twitter. man. <laughs> speaking of radio, Fred Toucher. Uh, Twitter man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Elon Musk now owns Twitter, $44 billion as of yesterday, the 25th of April. Uh, he tried to buy it. Twitter said no. Twitter actually put in a contingency plan of sorts to prevent. Which apparently didn't fucking work at all. I guess they relented. I read somewhere that they relented and they said, did. you know what, why don't, why don't we do it? Because $44 billion sounds pretty good. Exactly. 
All right. Uh, <laughs> Did you get a text? No, 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 no. Fucking assholes being like, oh, 44 billion is pretty good. Like, oh, okay. You were looking off. Sorry. You were looking uh, off to the side. I, I, was, I was wistfully <laughs> looking off in the distance of the Twitterverse. Okay. <laughs> this is referencing an off air conversation we had. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. Everything's on fine. your end. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah. $44 billion, which uh, apparently, even though, even though Musk is the richest person in the world now he still didn't actually have that money on hand he had to i think uh, because that's how rich people do it yeah he had to actually they borrow against their uh their stock value so that way physically they don't have any money on hand but they're always quote unquote in debt so they don't have to pay any taxes that's how they work it now this uh might be a, a shock to some people but musk i believe actually paid his taxes last year and he's i think like he pays like the highest uh, amount in taxes out of any billionaire yes relatively speaking and so somebody's like oh my god he paid like 800 million dollars in taxes or some you know obscene number and everyone's like oh my god 800 million in taxes but it was still like 1.7 percent overall taxing like that like that that's the thing that people can't grasp it's like yeah he did pay a shitload but relative to that shitload is like you paying 27 dollars in taxes He's at least paying them. He, well, yes, and, I, I'm not knocking the fact that he's fucking paying them. <laughs> he's paying them and he's disclosing that he's paying them. Yeah, well, yes. So you're, what you're saying is if he wasn't South African, he'd be a better presidential candidate. <laughs> you, you, honestly, with the power that this dude has, watch. He's, he's gonna halfway be, there. Well, he's going to be able to change that. Uh, he's going to well, be able to change I, that. Rule. I'll be honest. If there's ever going to be a non-United States citizen president, not including the British ones that were born before they became America. Arnold Schwarzenegger should have been it. Okay. So great. Bar none. Okay. Now that's a Republican I can get behind. Hey, at least he was the president in the Simpsons movie. Exactly. So, and the yeah. best he could do is be, he could be governor or governator. All right. I, I was elected to lead, not to read. <laughs> Uh, according to the independence, uh, Musk's offer was turned down by Twitter, which put a quote poison pill measure in place to stop a takeover attempt. It sounds so cool. It was like it's the poison pill, yeah. but it wasn't really poison. So, uh, Mike, what do you think is going to happen now that Musk is in control of Twitter? I am. Cautiously unoptimistic. Um, the way that he's saying he's going to make it a you know free and open source and all this blah 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 for for free speech. There, there's there's the there's the problem. Okay, that you you have to be. It's the paradox of tolerance, um, where. If, if you're tolerant to all speech, the speech that uh, that is incendiary and, um, you know, the anathema to actual free speech takes over and then stifles free speech in the end. So, therefore, you have to have an, a, an amount of intolerance to the intolerant, which is what I think he's going to not do anything about. So, he's going to allow all of you know, basically the neo-fascists to just run amok. And I'm hoping that if that does happen, people are just going to be like, all right, we're going to turn this into the next Tumblr. Bye. Yeah. Uh, I'm afraid that a certain someone is going to return to Twitter. Uh, yeah, and apparently that may happen and fuck that noise. He says it's not going to happen. He says he he's he's never going to come back, and he's got his. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he's going to come back or not. the The question is, would Elon Musk allow him to come back? Whether or not he comes back at all is another matter. But whether or not Elon Musk said, you know, it's basically setting up. Would I allow Trump to come back? I mean, not for nothing. The guy's a fucking national security threat. I don't think you should be allowed back on. I think literally it's a private company. I, they can do whatever they want. You're right. He's a private citizen now. They can do whatever they want, but fucking A. 
well, it'd be kind of going it's like against, yelling fire in a fucking crowded theater, man. It's kind of going against his own proclamations, his own uh, vision for what he wants to see Twitter. What Musk wants to see with Twitter. Musk says he wants to uh, really fight against all the spam bots are on Twitter. Well, I mean, that literally would, you know, I, I remember when they did the initial purge of, uh, you know, automated accounts. Like he, like uh, Trump lost like 17 million followers because it was all fucking Russian bots. <laughs> right. But what? That, see, that's sort of if if Musk were to allow Trump back on Twitter, though, it's right there just going against everything he said. Like, I don't want spam bots in here. OK, well, Trump's whole fucking fan base on Twitter, at least they're bots. They're the ones that are masking themselves as being supporters. I mean, obviously, there's yeah, John millions eight seven five four three two is a pure American. There's Muscovian. millions of maniacs out there that also support him in all sincerity. But yep. if ever you looked at uh, anything that he posted on Twitter, it was all the response. The top responses were not genuine. They were all from bonds. So um, it's kind of like when you see, you know, pro Amazon, <laughs> Amazon workplace uh, accounts. They're all bots. This sort of reminds me of when Justin Timberlake uh, bought MySpace. Yeah. Because uh, well, wasn't MySpace already on the way down when he bought it? Yeah, that was sort of it, it became affordable for someone like Justin Timberlake to become in to come in yeah. and become part owner. But also, I think that was also him trying to make it relevant again. I don't know if there's any concern right now about Twitter's relevancy in 2022. But I don't, I don't know. People are people are saying that, you know, is it there's a chance that the, the next thing will come out. And it'll supplant Twitter because of this. <laughs> Truth social. Uh, well, well, how about this? A stable platform will come out of this. How about that? What, what What's Mike Lindell's platform called? Uh, pillow Talk? I don't know. A uh, Pillow Talk where I'm against Jimmy Kimball and I want everyone to join me as I sue all the machines. And as long as you have my Giza dream sheets on your on your bed. My okay. pillow, they won't even allow I don't understand. me in I my don't own commercial. guy has enough money for fucking advertisements. Holy they they don't even let him in his own commercials anymore. <laughs> they told him, like, you can show up at the end and just say your name and that you're the CEO of my pillow, and then that's it. Yep. They're like, yeah, you're, you're literally killing your brand. They're starting to give him the old uh, Papa John treatment. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so, does that mean uh, Peyton Manning's going to buy out my pillow? Oh, my God. <laughs> Shut the company. And if you do that, shut the company down. I mean, not for nothing. If it was Eli Manning buying it, yes. But at least Peyton's funny. Uh, NME has an article. The music world reacts to Elon Musk buying Twitter. Uh, Jeff Barrow, um, who's from Portishead, okay. put it perfectly. He posted on Twitter very early this morning. He says, hi, Elon. You're a twat. How's about that for freedom of speech? <laughs> That's what people are saying, too. They're like, if you want freedom of speech, all right, suck my dick, bitch. I hate you. Like, it literally, it's, it's us. Yeah, there you go. You want freedom of speech? Eat a bag of dicks. At Elon. Bye. <laughs> um, uh, Ice-T, who uh, once upon a time was a rapper, and now he, too, is known for uh, Law & Order. <laughs> says if getting off social media would ruin your life you truly need to recalibrate your priorities just saying there you go uh i mean if i see saying i i i'd listen to him. kevin jonas wants to know will we now get the edit tweet option that's a dangerous fucking uh thing right there man because somebody tweets it out and then you edit it and then it's like well yeah that's 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 danger right there that's danger uh, Ice Cube says, free at last at Elon Musk. Take off my shadow ban, homie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, what you just said. Ice-T uh, later said uh, this morning, it would be kind of dope if Musk bought Twitter and just shut it off. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. And an Ellie Golding, Ellie Golding coming in. And uh, she posted, ignore the drama. Pay attention to this instead. She's retweeting uh, Antonio Guterres. Uh, talking about a climate catastrophe. 
Uh, that too. Yeah. And other people are like, uh, who gives a shit? Ukraine is getting fucking genocide, you know, on from, from Russia. Like it, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's, it, 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 it I understand it right. doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things, but does it? So, well, $44 billion. There you go right there. To help and you. All these people are like, Hey, remember when uh, Elon Musk said he was going to do, you know, uh, Oh, he, he uh, challenged the UN to, um, six for six billion dollars to end world hunger, and then the UN called his bluff and said, "Here's the detailed plan that you wanted to end world hunger. Give us six billion dollars." And he didn't. <laughs> didn't do it. Yeah, six billion. He's a bitch. Six exactly. billion dollars seems like chump somebody said like too. fifteen billion dollars will get rid of every single lead pipe in the entire United States of America, and have safe drinking water for all of America. And he's not going to do that, but he'll buy fucking Twitter for forty four billion dollars so he can. Tell people to shut the fuck up because I don't like getting tweeted at. <laughs> Just be able to sit there and laugh and say, oh, I own Twitter now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Well. have high hopes. Don't have high hopes. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't even have my own. I mean, I have my own Twitter, but I, I don't use it. Uh, I, I have one for the podcast and, um, oh yeah. Do we get a lot of traction on that? <laughs> you can follow us at Focus Hardly. <laughs> That's where we're at. There but, you go. That's all right. Uh, Jack also posts on Grinder. It's okay. Oh yeah, that is where you can find me. So, well, uh, very good. Forty-four billion dollars. What a crock of malarkey. Yep. All right. Uh, we will come back. And we'll uh, wrap up the podcast. Uh, it is an episode of new production. So here is another mm. piece that I put together uh, that I am particularly fond of. Um, Mike, did you have a Super Nintendo when you were growing up? I did not have a Super I had the Sega Genesis. Ah, uh, me too. Okay, then this is a little bit ironic because it's <laughs> us being Sega kids. And uh, now I've been playing. I, I subscribe to the Nintendo Switch online because it's you get like a year for like 20 bucks and I got a deal on it. But it, you get access to uh, the Super Nintendo emulator and the Nintendo emulator. And so they got a bunch of games on there. So I've been playing a lot of Super Nintendo on my Switch. It's uh, it's nice. Uh, when your kids get older, Mike, you gotta get them a switch and then drop the twenty additional bucks on that. Introduce them, introduce them to the classics. Introduce yourself to the classics. Uh, yeah, it's it's funny because the the classics back in the day, you're like, those were hard. They are fucking hard. I'm sitting there raging playing Super Mario World. I mean, and nowadays they've they've implemented save points in those games, but before like. It, it's pause. You hit pause. Yep. And that's your save point. You got to come back later on, on the, on the switch emulator. And then I have the, the classic systems too. And like the little, the little mini ones and they all have save, uh, uh, like restore points built into them. So not mm-hmm. just like automatic saving, like you were saying, but you can manually go in and create a restore point. And that's like, we didn't have that back then. Very rarely. Did you ever have a game that came with a, you know, a watch battery, installed that would uh save your progress for you so uh we're, we're a little bit spoiled now now it gets to a point where like you know i was considering buying elden ring which i did but i was i was apprehensive about it because i heard the game was hard uh, are you gonna solo her uh i i can't even solo shit myself that game i sit down i'll, I'll play elden ring and i get the reference but i'll sit down yeah. I'll, I'll play this fucking game and i'm just running around just like killing skeletons and shit and i'm like what am i even doing what is the point of this game i i don't feel like i'm accomplishing anything and i'm just mad that that is the point of this game <laughs> my my old roommate wellson he's so excited and i'm like the, the the three days after elden ring came out and he sends me a, a text he's like oh look i platinum down elden ring I'm like what the fuck i don't even know what i'm doing i don't know there's no instruction manual you just got to figure it out, man. Games don't even come with instruction manuals anymore. That was one of my favorite things is like buying, buying a physical copy of the game, cracking open the case and reading the instruction manual. Let's see. Um, uh, besides the Fallout games that I can physically look at right now, 
uh, three, New Vegas, four. Um, those are the only, those are the most recent physical copies of things I have. Everything else is pure Steam virtual. Yep. I think, uh, I think Elden Ring was the last physical game I bought, but now I'm just, I'm a lazy asshole now, and like it, I have to like get up and swap discs out if I want to play something. <laughs> I've got the Xbox Series S, man. That's all digital, and uh, all the games that yeah. I own physical are all in Game Pass. So, uh, it just it's a, it's a it's it's a life of sloth now. Uh, the Grand Theft Auto games always had really cool instruction manuals, and they came with um, maps. Of the city, of the location, yes. that would double as, as posters that you could frame. So, um, that that was always a treat. Skyrim, you got the fucking map that wasn't even it wasn't even printed on like standard paper. It was printed on some fancy papyrus, and I've got that framed in my living room. There you go. So, all right, uh, here we go. A video game theme production piece. Uh, we will return and wrap up the podcast. Stick around. This podcast is hardly focused. <laughs> Dissecting the news one tangent at a time. <laughs> Hear more at hardlyfocused.com. Good luck.